Welcome to Track Unleashed, a special interview and a company update with Nolan Veyard, founder and managing director. I'm Nicholas Jones, a Track customer, extending a warm welcome to you. If you've joined us, you're likely in the Track community of either long-standing customers, new customers, customers in waiting, or customers to be. Thank you for joining us. This is a personal conversation. It's really a human to human conversation, but it's also a conversation from a business, Track Kayaks, to you as a customer or a supporter. It's not a long conversation, but it's a really important one. So we hope you'll listen to the end. My name is Nicholas Jones. I'm speaking to you right now from Sambro Harbor on the coast of the Atlantic in Nova Scotia, Canada. First of all, I'm a Track customer. And I own two Track 1.0 boats, one of which has had the privilege of traveling to Lake Titicaca in Peru. I've been working with Nolan and the Track team for 14 years, and I've been able to witness the rebirth, growth, and evolution of this unique outdoor company. I help true up corporations and put the spirit back into work. I'm in the business of branding and communications, and most recently with Track, I've been the host of Wellness Equals Water, the video series. I'd like to introduce the guy behind Track the person that is ultimately accountable for the day in, day out, the good, the bad, and the ugly, he has to own it all. I'd like to introduce him also as a friend, a father of a beautiful family, and a fellow entrepreneur who came from a chartered accountancy background and made a radical shift in his career path to take on navigating an innovative outdoor recreation company through every kind of water you can imagine from calm flat lakes to rolling sea waves to crazy class four rapids. He's seen it all. Nolan, this has been your baby for as long as we've known each other. And I'm excited to share our conversation with the track audience. This conversation will be about 25 minutes long. Please listen until the end because there's an interesting surprise declaration that Nolan is gonna make. What track is taking on is bigger than the outdoor industry itself. It is about restoring the role of water on our earth and in our bodies. The role of water for human beings is not what you think it is. It is so much more. Nolan, great to be with you again. How do you want to start this off? Well, first of all, I just want to thank you, Nicholas, for, for taking on, you know, um, having this conversation. I think it's an, an important one. And I, I think where it stands is we're in this situation with a uh, backlog and pre-orders and, and as a member of the track community, I think people will want to, you know, if I were them and, uh, you know, we've been thinking about this a lot. If I was someone looking at track or working with track in some way or playing with us, uh, I would certainly want to understand uh, what this is all about. I'd, I'd want to kind of really get a sense of what's really happening. Um, why is the situation where it's at? Um, how does this fit into the context of other outdoor gear in the outdoor industry? And uh, really give people a clear picture of the situation. Because I think anyone who is, uh, you know, pre-ordering a piece of, you know, expensive equipment, uh, or looking to get involved in the outdoor industry would want to understand uh, what's really going on and what's happening. And so uh, it's really a kind of a look in uh, to the company and for us to share a little bit more with everyone um, ab about where we're, we're at and where we're going. That's great. Cause you know, if I was uh, waiting for track 2.0 and I wish I did have one actually, <laughs> that would be awesome. I'd be thinking, why am I waiting? You know, am I ever going to get this boat? Uh, you know, what's really going on? What's taken so long? Cause I, I mean, I've been so happy with my 1.0 that 2.0 would be quite a bit of anticipation. So, you know, yeah, it is indeed. And, and, uh, you know, people have made, made these investments in, in kayaks or they're considering uh, making an investment in a very unique craft that the track is. And so I think it's, you know, it's kind of like important to give people a very, very clear picture of this. And uh, for, for us and for me personally to say, you know, I feel, I feel for someone who is either has purchased one or pre-ordered one, or it has one uh, in mind to purchase. And they're looking at the situation and say, well, how come there's a currently a 10 to 12 month uh, wait time? Uh, 
uh, on this. And, and, and so I think it's important to, to, to really give them a clear picture of what, what that, you know, what the dynamics are at play and, and how might that look from their perspective? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I, I can understand that. I mean, I, to put myself in that, in that position, but the real question I would have then, since you're at the helm of track, uh, Nolan, right? And you have been for 14 years that I've known you, then what it is you're actually, what is it that you're actually offering now to, you know, track customers in waiting, I call them, right? Like, or, or in that standby pattern. I mean, what can they count on now? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're getting it done. Um, and uh, through, you know, we're, we'll, we'll unpack a little more of this on this, you know, through this conversation later on. But, you know, uh, for me, it's being kind of 100% responsible for uh, getting kayaks delivered to, uh, to our customers. And, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely been delays that have happened and, uh, they've happened due to uh, a number of factors, but I'm someone in, in running a company and you, you know, you've worked with me and, and know me long enough. There's no excuses. There, there's some reasons and factors that have led to some of the delays. Uh, but right now, what we're really happy with is that we've now gotten uh, all of the materials in place for an 800 unit uh, production run. And now it's a matter of time. We're really pushing the factory to, uh, you know, our factory partners to really uh, improve and deliver quality output on a monthly basis so we can get those 800 units produced as, as soon as, as we've said, as soon as humanly possible. And so it's taken a lot to make that happen. And again, we'll get into more of those, uh, you know, factors and the things that had to, to happen over the past uh, six to 12 months to, uh, to get in the position we're in now. Mm -hmm. So what I heard there, Nolan, was, was you know, you, you've got everything together to, to, to produce these 800 boats, right? And so what's the black and white time frame? I mean, really, I'm put my hat on as someone who's waiting for a boat, right? For who knows months or, you know, longer. Um, what, what are you really promising to deliver now as, uh, as a, you know, managing director of track kayaks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, for, for many of you, you might have a bit of an understanding of the production process uh, with track. Uh, some, some people don't uh, understand the production process, but the hull material, the actual material that the boat is made from the, the, the base of it, the, the hull of the boat um, was the last thing that was hung up in a port congestion uh, in the U S side. And it was hung up for about two and a half months. So super painful to, cause it was with, you know, outside of everyone's control, the supplier, uh, our factory, uh, us as a company. And here it was sitting in, in port congestion for two and a half months. And until that hull material arrives, you know, at our factory, the, the thing that takes the, the most time, which is the welding, the hot air welding and RF welding of the, uh, the skin, the, the completed welded skin, uh, is what takes the longest in manufacturing. So now we've got the last major component in place. We have all the other supply and materials in place to uh, produce those 800 boats. Now it's having our team really geared up to produce them as efficiently as possible. And what we're looking at is about a 12 to 14 month time frame for those 800 boats to be produced. And they will be, there will be continuous uh, fulfillment and shipping to the earliest pre-orders as they become available. So it's gonna be sort of continuously from about September to June, maybe as late as July or August of 2022 when those deliveries will, will hit. But the, obviously the soonest people, the, the most, the people who ordered earliest are getting their boats first. And so they'll, there will be sort of continuous fulfillment over the next uh, 12 to 14 months. We're going to push the factory. Sorry. We'll, 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 our plan is to push the factory and our team to really improve that quality output, uh, monthly quality output over the course of those say 12 months. And we'd like to have those 800 boats produced uh, 
sooner than 14 months, more like 11 to 12 months. But 14 months is kind of the outside time frame that we're we're seeing right now. Um, and to give context to uh, to the listeners here, anyone who's who's uh, tuning into this, is that uh, we have about currently 600 kayaks that are in the backlog, and then 200 kayaks out of the 800 are for people who are placing their orders in the next three to five months, uh, depending on how quickly those get, how quickly the uptake is on, on the new orders in the balance of 2021. So obviously the backlog gets fulfilled first, and that's what leads to the uh, 10 to 12 month delivery timeframe um, on new orders that are coming in currently in, you know, say July, August, September of, of 2021. Thank you, Nolan. That's really clear. So 800 boats in a, in a promise of 14 months on the outside. Um, and that, that you've really taken care of backlog of orders as well as new anticipated orders and put everything in place. So we're going to get into like what it took to do that because uh, I think you alluded to the story of just the material being held up for two and a half months in port, right? So give us, give us a big picture, right? So we really understand what's happened in the last year and a half. What's the big picture perspective from the whole outdoor industry, you know, outdoor rec industry uh, perspective? What happened? Well, um, the last 18 months, I'm sure for anyone listening to this call has been a little different than the 18 months before that. Um, this pandemic response and the ripple effects that have happened as a result of the pandemic, you know, that pandemic response has been substantial. And two things have happened. One, it's had a big disruption in supply chain globally and also logistics. So, you know, pretty much anyone in the outdoor industry and anyone who's, you know, purchasing outdoor equipment can probably relate to this, but a lot of outdoor equipment is in this sort of backlog stand uh, position where you've got to wait. There's lead times for purchasing, uh, purchasing product, whether it's, you know, bicycles or, uh, you know, anything in the outdoor industry is really in high demand. And so there's the supply chain challenge. And then on the other side of it, um, I think something that, that, isn't surprising to me that happened, which is I've related to this like a sort of a gut level visceral response that human beings have had to their health being threatened or challenged that, that is part of the deeper picture of the deeper commitment that we have at track, which is that there's a nature deficit <laughs> disorder out there. And this, you know, I think a lot of people at the gut level, when their health is being challenged, is starting to look at this and go, I need to get out in nature. I need to be in the outdoors. My, my physiology, my just everything about my being from, from a stress management standpoint to physiologically, I need to be out in nature. I need to be hiking. I need to be paddling. I need to be doing something uh, in nature. So what's happened there is there's been this big surge in demand for outdoor equipment. So outdoor companies are in a position where there's uh, this surge of demand. And we start, started to see that in the last half of 2020. The first half was a weird half <laughs> of 2020. But in July through December of last year, you know, the demand in the industry, you know, the demand for outdoor equipment in general really, really took off. Um, and at the same time, you know, our factory, and this is not unlike many of the other factories around the world um, producing this type of equipment was shut down from the middle of March until the middle of July. And then at the, you know, towards the end of July and into December, they were working at not as high a capacity as what they are used to and what's normal because they were working through government regulations and distancing and all this stuff. And so uh, but with that surge in demand, their purchase orders coming into the factory were increasing dramatically. And so as a relatively small company in this industry, with our particular factory, we were caught a little bit because we were, we entered the pandemic 
last year with about 200, you know, 150 to 200 units in backlog uh, since we introduced the, the track 2.0 in 2017. So we were still in a backlog situation, but we were almost caught up. We had gotten to the point by the end of 2019, first couple months of 2020, we were almost caught up and out of backlog. We were probably, like I said, only 100, 150 kayaks away from being completely caught up. And our plan uh, in 2020 was to produce 350, 300 to 350 kayaks uh, during 2020. And when, after our, our factory shut down and then uh, the surge in the outdoor industry and our factory having to really respond to the likes of Patagonia and Yeti and Arcteryx and Mountain Hardware and companies that they also manufacture for, uh, we just didn't get any production done in 2020, which put us in a huge, huge compromise. Wow, it's ironic having picked uh, a factory, you know, an extraordinary place. I've had a chance to visit that with you um, that handles as trusted by those huge brands also became the biggest challenge for them, you know, and that perfect storm of people literally dying to get out of their homes, you know, and get, get connected to nature. And the uh, and the breakdown in this the you know the supply chain and the logistics. I mean, I mean over here even just trying to buy a lawnmower, right? You know, or or a freezer, we encounter the same thing. You know, months of delays. Um, how did you pull through? Like, who are the people behind the scenes that that uh, that that managed through this crisis and and the challenges you had and the breakdowns? Um, who was helping you? Like, uh, what's the team like? Takes a village. Yeah. As they say, um, uh, I can say, you know, first off, just being someone, you know, committed to it at a deep, deep level. And we'll get into where that is coming from, you know, as we carry out the call here. Um, for me, I know my family was someone that, you know, that my, my kids, my wife, uh, are people who had to endure <laughs> uh, a lot uh, to make space for me to do what needed to be done. Like it was, you know, clear the clutter, get to the heart of the matter, have to make some tough calls, you know, because, you know, with a small, relatively small team and the demand and the situation, I, I'm sure anyone on this call can just imagine what that would have been like to try to, you know, kind of make our way through the eye of the needle, uh, you know, to, to do these things. And so, uh, but I can't do that without my team. And again, with a, with a relatively small team, and some of you on this call have probably dealt with the likes of Hans or Jason or Cole or Curtis or, uh, you know, uh, Lloyd and, and Dax, you know, uh, some of the core members of our team were huge in stepping up and doing what it took to, uh, to, to pull off a lot in the midst of, of that series of delays. And then, you know, on top of that is all of our partners, you know, um, I actually can't, it's hard to put words to how and why uh, we were able to pull our way through that in the in an effective way in the effective way that we did, um, it's almost not believable that we pulled that off. But it took, like I said, a village. It took all of our partners, whether it was the manufacturing partners and in, in you know the the team at at several of our factories, to financial partners, to uh, you know gear, other gear partners that we work with, um, incredible sacrifices and commitments that were made to uh, pull our way through that. And, uh, and not just, you know, it was like, it wasn't just a survive thing. It was like, we were able to, to find a way to build a more solid, solid foundation for the company for the future. Like we thrive, we're thriving our way through this. At the same time, it was tough. And, you know, it's that dynamic of, you know, the old adage of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I can certainly say 
that we've come out the other end of this now entering into this 800 unit production run uh, way stronger than we ever have been. And that's enlivening for me that it makes me feel great. It, um, I feel ex an extreme amount of, of gratitude towards everyone that had a part in that. And some of you listening will probably know, you know, maybe it was you that helped, helped with that as well. And even our customers, you know, like when I think of the kind of people that are pre-ordering these, you know, unique sea kayaks, these are independent sea kayak, they're, they're, they're kayaks for independence, you know, these are kayaks you can do things in that you can't do with any other craft. You know, you, you see and do things and can take on and get experiences in these kayaks that, that you can't out of any other craft. And I know that you know that, um, but it's, it's super uh, amazing to think of the kinds of people and the, 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 there was certainly, there's been frustration, but there's been a level of understanding and um, a level of humanity that has been displayed over and over and over again with our customer base. And I can't express my gratitude any more um, for, for that, like a, an incredible number of factors to, to have us come out as strong as we have. No, Nolan, I, like I said, I have 14 years, right? And um, we're fellow entrepreneurs. And, and I know you've been through some, some real challenges when you restarted, you know, when, the, when track was reborn and, and, and you took the helm. And, um, but how does this rank? Was this, was this one of the tougher, uh, uh, you called it the eye of the needle to get through for you historically? Um, well, you know, it was very, very challenging and tough conversations, all the, t the tough conversations had to be had. Um, but, you know, I never, you know, like I've said before, I feel like track has had a kind of a life of its own <laughs> mm -hmm. where I, I never really doubted that, you know, it was more how we were going to make our way through it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't whether we were going to make our way through it. And it comes from this deep commitment to that, to these paddlers, mm -hmm. you know, and what we make available to people. And like I said, the, 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 the time that we had in these delays to build a lot more, um, uh, a lot more programming and support for our customer base through these zoom away calls that we've done some of the training programs that Hans and Jason and Cole and team have put together. Um, and it's, it's about giving people that confidence and competence to get the most out of this boat like it's a very unique kayak but if it just sits in a garage or sits in the back of a smart car and doesn't get used and used to to the extent that it's capable mm. then there's something missing and so you know i i think it, it's it's kind of like this was a fight worth fighting you know for me it has been since the start um anytime you face a deep amount or a significant amount of adversity, I've found strength at a very, very core level that I can't even really um, describe or sometimes I have a hard time relating to, but it's there. And I know that members of my team feel that and have that at their disposal as well. And it's because it's a fight worth fighting for. We're giving people these experiences and it's, it's a recreational product to, an ability to get out on the water and experience nature. Uh, but that means a lot more. We'll get into that downstream here, but that means a lot more and has a lot more significance than most people maybe give it credit for, <laughs> but it's yeah. a fight worth fighting. Yeah. But I, I hear even more than that. I mean, I hear that you, what you had to go through in the last year and a half was almost like a recalibration of everything. You know, it wasn't just your people pulling through and dealing with the challenges and the tough conversations and everything, but what were you preparing for? Was it, it wasn't just fixing a short, you know, like a, what you, you know, in the, the time tracks being around and wants to be around, a, you know, production fix, right? It was more than that, wasn't it? What were you preparing for? Yeah, it's funny you, you share that term of recalibrating because it, 
it really was, it did feel like that. It was a recalibration of, you know, uh, our team, our partners, uh, because I, I'm sure you can imagine with, you know, months of delays and like not having any production during 2020 and having people wait that were supposed to have gotten their kayaks in 2020, having to wait till late 2021 now to receive their kayaks. Um, very, very tough uh, situation. And so with the, that extent of delays, I'm sure anyone listening can imagine what that would take from a company standpoint to get through that eye of the needle. And so we had to rethink some things and like we said, recalibrate um, how we did it and what was required in order to pull that off. And that took a lot of very creative conversations and, and, committed conversations. I know that some of my partners and I, I remember going past midnight on, a, on several occasions uh, coming up with what might be the best set of, of approaches to, to make our way through this. And, and uh, without getting into the details, it, it, it just takes something. And so uh, that recalibration set track up, I think, for the next 20 to 20 plus years. You know, mm -hmm. and that uh, is exciting and it feels really solid for me. And I know our team feels it. Uh, I know just this past weekend, we had some track pilot ambassador training uh, here on our track campus. And in the midst of all of this, we were able to move to water and be on the coast of the Salish Sea here in Van on Vancouver Island. Uh, we're on opposite coasts here right now. You're in Nova Scotia and I'm in British Columbia on, on Vancouver Island. And this past weekend, we had a lot of stuff come together the past few weekends, but this particular last weekend, you know, I met a paddler who I'd never met before and we hosted him here on campus. And he was able to get the training in the boat itself, get a bunch of paddling done with the team uh, and get him prepared to go back to Toronto to unleash paddlers in Toronto and be able to offer sea and test opportunities and training and uh, opportunities there in the greater Toronto area. And I had never met this guy, Thomas, before. And it was such a joy to get to know this guy and to know that what our team was able to deliver for value to him. He walked away from here completely ready to take on his life. He felt invigorated. He felt probably a level of, of, of um, wellness and vitality that maybe he hadn't for a while. And he gave us so much from the time, like he, he, just a wonderful guy. And this is the kind of people that we get to work with, you know, and these are the kind of people that we are in service of and, and vice versa. And it's such a great kind of symbiotic relationship. Um, and, it, and it's just a, a real privilege to have been able to host him here on our, on our campus on Vancouver Island and, and have him walk away with what he walked away with. I really feel that uh, it's like a magic in the air. There's a special quality to track. You said you mentioned it earlier. Something about there's something about this company, right? Um, that's 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 beyond the sum of the parts and the and the the recalibration and all the people that pulled through and all that. What's underneath track? What are the qualities and deeper values, you know, that really have track be special? Yeah, that's a great question. I'd say. You know, probably the best way to get that across is for me, since, you know, being involved at the very earliest stages of, of the company, um, I knew that we had a role to play in, it was really redefining what it means, what, what health and vitality really means. You know, we've had, I think we've been told a bill of goods, you know, grow, you know, growing up and over the last maybe 10 to 15 decades uh, on what it really means to be healthy and vital and alive and the role of water in, in that, you know, we're made of, we, we talk about it in the wellness equals water series, which was part of the, the genesis of the last 
18 months and, and, and in fact, your role in helping us uh, really uh, lay that out and, and, uh, and play with it a bit because it's a, it's a different paradigm of thinking around the role of, of, of water in human health and in the health of the planet. And so um, I think that recalibration, you know, and how we defined our role going forward was, was part of honoring some of those original origins of my involvement with track, which was to me, it's always been about health and vitality and wellness, like real clear health, vitality and wellness. And it's because we're made of 75%, 70 to 80% water, 99% by molecular count. People know that when you are around water or in water, you feel good, right? But, but most people just leave it at that. They don't realize that, you know, if you, if you peel that onion a little further, there's something very special there and very real about the impact of water on our health and vitality. Yeah, I, I, that's evolved over the last year and a half, but I think it's always been there for track. And that's part of that almost sacred quality, you know, like a, a stewardship that goes way beyond, uh, you know, making sure that an outdoor recreation company delivers, which you've stated already, you know, that you, you went through the eye of the needle to get things sorted and, and, and get that, to get the factory going now. Um, what do you want to leave people with? We're coming to a close, Nolan, and um, we're going to say goodbye to everybody soon and, and thank them for their time to listen to this conversation. But I did promise, you know, that there would be a little surprise declaration, you know, from you, um, you know, at the helm of track in regards to water, right? And in, 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 in what it really means. What is track really going to stand for? What's your declaration moving forward that's bigger bigger than track itself and bigger for that matter than the outdoor, you know, recreation industry? Yeah, great question. And, and I, I think I would start it off with something that really, I'd say seeded track at a very early stage, which was our, our business mission of uh, what we called Life Unleashed. And I remember you were involved in that 14 years ago in setting up, like going through that process of, of, determining what are we really in service of? What's the mission of the company? What's kind of under, under the surface, you know, the, the duck, you see the legs going underneath the water. You don't see the legs going, but they're going. So what are we really um, in service of? And we had it all factored out lots of different things and vitality and health and, and uh, freedom and all kinds of different things that we laid out and we, we boiled it right down to life unleashed. And we've used that as our mission and as a guiding principle for the last 14 years. And what I've come to, to know and come to learn more on a conscious level recently is the role of water in that. And how water has been diminished the power of water, the role of water. We're talking, and Nicholas, you know some of the history of this more than, than I do. Um, mine is more, I, I've got a visceral kind of gut level connection to that concept. But, you know, the, the, the role of water has been known, the, the, the power of, of water as a, as a medium um, as a, you know, structured water, living water, um, you know, the power of water, the fact that we're made of it has been known to be extremely powerful for a long time. But the last maybe 120, 150 years, the, the role of water and how ubiquitous it's been made, you know, we're, we're, we've been made to think that it's just ubiquitous, water's everywhere, it's a resource, but yeah. It's a resource, all that stuff. But Manages. we're talking about this, how special yeah. and unique water is and the role that that has in the health of the human being and all living beings and the health of the planet and how that's connected. And so, you know, we're not a company that, that we're not out to say, oh, we're here to save the environment. 
you know, that's not track. Um, yes, through what we're doing, the environment will be, will thrive, <laughs> right? Uh, but we're here to help people connect the dots of how that feeling of, man, I love being in and around water, how that connects to their own health and how that connects to the health and the wellness of the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's actually really simple. Um, how we implement that over time, where it goes, we don't know. And that's the beauty of it. It's kind of the mystery of, of where this is taking us. Uh, but for anyone who, you know, uh, has been waiting or is looking at track and, and, and interested in getting involved, there, there's a deeper dive there. And it may not be for everyone, uh, but know that that's what we stand for. Super clear. Inspiring. I mean, you know, with all the things that companies had to deal with in the last year and a half and the challenges that you just laid out, um, that you're still coming through with the deepest purposeful, sourceful mission. You mentioned, you know, you recalibrated for the next 20 years. What I hear though, is now there's a deeper mission, a deeper reason to steward something bigger than track and the whole outdoor industry, you know, on the planet itself for the next 20 years. So I, I really look forward to, you know, witnessing that if I can help in any way. And, you know, I'm sure everybody listening it, will be excited to hear how that how that unfolds, right? How we say it unpacks, <laughs> you know, as a track does. And so thank you, Nolan. Thank you for that. That's a commitment and a declaration that goes beyond um, what most companies are dealing with right now and how limited their view is and how much, of, how much they're in survival, you know? So giving us that surplus, giving that inspiration uh, is something we can share with every, every, everybody in the track community, right? It's, it's the biocurrency, right? It's a, it's the new juice, you know, <laughs> it, it, you can keep you topping it. it up every time you get out on the water. And I, yeah. and I absolutely love that. It's a real source of abundance. You know, there's no, you got it. And yeah. you know, the other thing to be mindful of is that we're all human. You know, I yeah. think everyone on this call has to, you know, I think the invitation is to think, you know, we need to reclaim that humanity. We need to be human with each other. Uh, but understanding who we are as humans and the role of water, the role that water plays and the role that that relationship with water plays is, is another invitation for people to kind of just look at that for yourself. Mm. Um, yeah. but, but being as human as we possibly can, and this is another reason why we wanted to do this call is like, we're all humans. So let's connect on that level and talk about what's real, what's really happening here <laughs> with track and what we're playing into, where things are going and what we're sort of a stand for uh, and what you can count on with, with, with track. Thank you, Nolan. So we had a powerful conversation and uh, wish you a good night and uh, been really great. And everybody who's been watching, um, you know, like I said, you know, it's a track community of your, you know, of our existing customers, of customers in waiting, you know, of customers to be, of customers 20 years down the road, <laughs> and even maybe just people who are going to benefit from the, uh, the core mission being unfolded and, and delivered into the world. Um, I thank you for all that. And, uh, you know, let's, let's paddle onwards from here. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Nicholas. Yes.